Hello again, I'm Eli the Computer Guy and this is episode 317, Ping and Trace Route for Network Troubleshooting. So if you're using a Windows computer and you are trying to do network troubleshooting, Ping and Trace Route are invaluable tools. These are just really, really great, simple tools to use and they will make your life a lot easier. So both Ping and Trace Route are basic DOS commands, they're basic DOS programs. Uh, and basically what they allow you to do is be able to go out on the network and communicate and see if other computers or network devices are there. Essentially the idea with Ping is saying, hey, computer number five, are you there? And computer number five will say, yeah, man, I'm here. So imagine if you were like in a cube farm. So uh, so you're sitting in your little cube and you want to see if your friend is over in his cube, like five cubes down. You might say, hey, Bob, are you there? And if he says, yeah, I'm here, then you know he's there. If you don't get a response, then you know he's not there. And that is all it is. That's about all the communication that happens is all you do is see if the computer or the device is present and is functioning. Uh, or not. So basically to show you how the ping command works before we go into the troubleshooting methodology, I do just want to go to a command prompt screen. So this is a basic command prompt screen, whether you're using uh, Windows 7, Windows Vista, or Windows 95, you will, you will go to this command prompt, uh, command prompt screen, and then you just ping um, whatever device you want to see if it exists. So I'll do a ping 192.168.1.1. This is my router. And I will see if it is there. So it pings 192.168.1.1. And we can see that it says reply from 192.168.1.1. Bytes equals 32. Time equals 2. Time delayed equals 4. TTL. So we know that that IP address is active and it is responding. We don't know what it is. I know it's the router because I, in fact, know it's the router. We don't know what it is, but we do know it is up and running. So if we go here and then let's say we ping something um, that I know is not active. So I do ping 192.168.1. I don't know, uh, 2.22. Then we will see that it tries to ping and it's trying, but then we see reply from 192.168.1.3 that the host is unreachable. So that we will see that the host is unreachable or we will see that there is no reply at all. So 192.168.1.1, we saw that, it that that computer, that device was accessible. Then when we go and do the other one, we see it is not accessible. That is basically all the ping command is though. It pings the network device or computer, and then the network or device computer responds back to you to tell you if it is active or not. Now, there are two reasons that a computer or network device may not respond back to you. The first one, obviously, is that it is off or it is broken. So that's a problem. The second one is that if it has been configured not to reply to ping traffic, this is the ICMP traffic. If it has been told not to do that, maybe it has Norton firewall installed or McAfee firewall and stuff installed. So that is one thing that is important to understand is if that's been configured not to respond to a ping, then it won't respond to a ping. But most devices, in normal networks will be able to respond to this ping. So how do you use the ping in the normal world? Well, basically, how you use the ping in the normal world is you use it to figure out what devices are active so that you can figure out what you need to fix. So if you are sitting at your computer and you seem to be having networking issues, you can use the ping command to try to figure out what is going on. The first thing that you will try to ping is you'll do ping and then you'll do 127.0.0.1. If you ping 127.0.0.1, that is called the loopback address. The loopback address is the network card itself. So essentially, you are pinging yourself from yourself. So it, you don't need a cable attached. You don't need anything. You can, as long as you have a network card installed and the drivers are installed properly, you can ping 127.0.0.1 
and you should receive a response that it's a-okay. If you don't receive a response, if this doesn't work, that may mean your network card drivers are not installed properly. That may mean your the, the, the network card itself is dying or has problems. Essentially, if you try to ping 127.0.0.1 and there are any problems, then that means there is a problem with your computer. Look no farther. It is your computer. The next thing that you can do is you can then go and you can ping a device or a computer on the network to see if it is accessible. So I pinged 192.168.1.1. That is the default gateway. That is the router that is sitting on my network. So the question is, is okay, I know my network card is working, so now I'm going to ping out and see if this device responds. Now, if this device does not respond, you know that there's a, either a problem with this device or there's a problem with the connections in between. Maybe the cable has been cut. Maybe the switch that is connecting everything is powered off, so on and so forth. So basically what you do is you try to ping something that you know should be active. If that doesn't work, you then try to ping another device. So let's say you have a printer on the network, 192.168. Dot one dot five. This would be an IP address that you already know. Now if you try to ping this device and it doesn't work, and then you try to ping this device and this does work, then you know that there is an issue with the first device. If you try to ping this device and it doesn't work, and you try to ping this device and it doesn't work, then you know it's probably the cabling, the switches, some part of the networking between the devices. So that's how you troubleshoot that. The next thing you would do is you would ping a device or the computer by its host name. So this is the friendly name you have for computers. So Eli's laptop, server, file server, whatever you have called the computer is the host name. Why that's important is because what will happen is your computer will make a call to DNS and will try to receive back the IP address of the computer you're trying to access. So if 192.168.1.5 is called test, we can do ping test. That will call out to the DNS server. What you'll see, I'll show you in the examples, you should get a reply that says pinging the IP address. So it should resolve the IP address and then ping the computer. Well, if it resolves the IP address, but then can't talk to the computer, you know that there is an issue here. If it doesn't resolve the domain name at all, it can't turn the domain name into an IP address, then you know that there is an issue with your DNS settings. Most of the time you see this when somebody has gone in and messed with the, the network card and changed the DNS settings. So if you try to ping the IP address, it works fine. When you try to ping the domain name, it doesn't work. Well then, if you're trying to go farther, so now you've figured out your entire local area network works, so now you're trying to figure out about a problem, trying to get to, let's say, CNN.com, or in the example I'll show you in a minute, DSLreports.com, just because it's easier. So if we're trying to figure out what the problem is here, then what we can do is we can ping our default gateway, 192.168.1.1, that tells us if we can get to the default gateway, that should get us out to the internet. Then we ping, ping dslreports.com, that should resolve to an IP address, and then we should be able to ping it and get a response. If that doesn't resolve, then we know that we have a problem with DNS. Again, it may be a DNS setting in our computer. At this point, it may be a DNS setting within the router itself. Or if this is your own server, whatever you're trying to ping is something that you've set up, maybe it is a problem within the internet DNS settings that you've created. If you can't ping by the domain name, you try to ping by the IP address for the server, if you still don't get a response, then you know there's probably something mucked up with your server. And if you do get a response, then you know it goes back to DNS. So this is the overall process of how you use the ping command for troubleshooting. And I use this all the time. And it's very, very useful and it's very, very simple. The final tool that I will show you at the end is something called TraceRoute or TraceRT. 
What Traceroute does is when you're sitting at your computer and you're trying to access another server, as your packets go through the different hops to get to the server that you're trying to connect to, so when we talk about hops, we are talking about routers, it will send a reply back to your computer for every one of these routers it goes through, the packets go through, so that if there is a problem, you know exactly where the traffic stopped. So if you're trying to go from your computer to this server, you get the first reply, you get the second reply, you get the third reply, and then let's say on the fourth one you don't get a reply. Well, you know all the way up to here the routers work, and then there's an issue somewhere on this side. It shows you where the traffic stops. This becomes important, especially in the modern world where more people are using co-location facilities. So co-location facilities are where you take your own servers, but you put them into a data center. So you rent space in a data center. Well, if you're having problems accessing that server, you don't know if it's you, you don't know if it's your ISP, you don't know if it's a co-location facilities networking equipment, or maybe it's your networking equipment that's sitting in the co-location facility using the trace route command will allow you to try to figure that out. I use this quite a bit back when I had my, uh, my server up in the co-location facility. Sometimes it was my fault, sometimes it was the co-location facility's fault. By using the trace route command, you can go, oh, I know that this is the last place that the communication was seen, so I know whoever controls this, this router is the one that needs to make the repair. So with that, let's go back on the computer and I'll show you how the ping command works. So let me make sure my uh, Windows 8 computer is up so that I can actually, in fact, ping it. Okay, so we're back, and this is just a normal Windows 7 computer, so ping works on Windows 7. <laughs> Hopefully it'll work on Windows 8. Uh, Windows Vista, Windows XP, Windows 95, Windows NT, so on and so forth. So let me just clear the screen there, and we will go to the screen. So here we are just sitting uh, at the command prompt. So this is just a normal command prompt that you go to. As I showed you before, if I want to ping my router, I do 192.168.1.1, and that pings my router and tells me that my router is working. Now the question that you may have, you say, okay, well Eli, you know what your router's IP address is. How do I know what my router's IP address is? Well, that is where you can use the IP config command. So IP C O oops. IP C O N F I G IP config. That's all it is, and this will give you your IP configuration settings for your computer. So I hit enter, and then if we can see, let me let me get my little uh, drawing drawing thing. So if we can see up here. This tells us the information about the network card that we're dealing with. So you can see that the IPv4 address is 192.168.1.3. So that is the IP address of my computer, of this computer. The, the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 and the default gateway is 192.168.1.1. So it's important that you understand a little bit about these TCP IP settings. Remember, these are generally all received from the DHCP server, so they may be different from you. You may be 192.168.2.1, or you might be 10.1.10.1. Depending on uh, whatever your DHCP is configured for, that is the information you will see there. So just because I say my router is 192.168.1.1, that doesn't mean your router is that. So do IP config so that you can see uh, what the router is. So I can see my router is 192.168.1.1. So uh, now that I have that, I can go and I can just see some of the basic things going on um, with my network. So if I say, hey, can I talk to another computer on my network? Is DNS resolving properly? I can do ping and test. So test is my Windows 8 computer. If I ping test, you will notice that it resolves the domain name. So if you look up here, it says ping test, and then it gives an IP address. See, it says pinging test, and then it says 192.168.1.5. So it's showing me that it's going out to the DNS server, 
It's recovering the IP or receiving the IP address from the DNS server for the computer name test, and then it's pinging that IP address. Very important that you understand that concept, and then it just works fine. Then, obviously, if the DNS did not work properly, I would have to go over to the other computer, find out what its IP address is, and I could just ping it by its IP address, 192.168.1.5, to see if it works. So sometimes, if you try to ping by the domain name, that won't work, but when you try to ping by the IP address, it will, so therefore you know that there is a DNS issue. There's a problem with the DNS. Now, when I'm talking about the DNS issue, Basically, what we're talking about is we go here, we go to your, your network in internet, network connections, you right click, you go to properties, you then select on TCP IP version 4, and you go to properties, and what you'll notice is this gives you uh, how your, your IP settings for your computer are set up. Now down at the bottom, this obtain DNS server address automatically, a lot of times people will have this filled out with garbage. For whatever reason, they will go in here and they will put in garbage. They think that they're being funny, they think they're being cute, and in reality, they are just messing everything up. This is the server that your computer will go to to resolve an IP address. If the server information in here is incorrect, then it's not gonna resolve properly, and then you will not be able to resolve domain names. So if your DNS isn't working properly, you can ping by the IP address, but not the domain name. Test, cnn.com, any of those human-friendly readable domain names, you won't be able to see. So with that, uh, let, me, let me close out of that. And so now we have pinged. So we've pinged the router, and I've shown you how to get the IP address for your router. We've pinged the local computer, and we've pinged the IP address of the local computer. Now what I can do is I can go out and I can try to ping a website such as dslreports.com. So by pinging DSL reports, this is now out on the internet. This is out, this is all happening out on the internet. So you're pinging out to DSL reports, who knows where that is, somewhere on the cloud. So if this gives you back the proper information, then you know that DNS, your internet DNS is working properly and that the server is up and running. If you can't ping dslreports.com from the domain name, then you would try to ping it from its external IP address. So we do ping 209.123.109.175, and you hit enter, and that will give you reply. Now why this is important for you is again, we all want to be thinking about we're troubleshooting somebody else's equipment, but the reality is you might be troubleshooting your own equipment, your own problem. A lot of you guys want to be setting up your own servers for inside your house or inside your offices. You're not taking my advice. You say, Eli, I want to build my own box and I want to host my own box. So that means you have to go into your own DNS settings from your registrar, so from GoDaddy or oneandone.com or Network Associates, and change the IP address for the domain name there. If you do it improperly, then it won't work right. So that's where the resolution and the IP address work, uh, work for this. So that is basically how you use the ping command for troubleshooting again. It's not too hard, not too complicated, but it is something very important to understand. Now the final thing that I'll show you is I'll show you the trace route command. So I do clear screen. And so what I'll do is I'll do trace, T-R-A-C-E, route, or, or R-T. So it's just tracer. So me being me, I say tracer, but it's trace route. D-S-L reports.com. And then what this will do is this will show you every router that this, community, this packet goes through. So you will see that it goes through 192.168.1.1. Then on step two, it goes through Verizon. Then step three, it goes through another Verizon. Step four, another Verizon. Then Alternet, then Washington, D.C., then Washington, D.C., then Washington, D.C., then Newark, then Newark. These are all the different routers that the packets go through in order to get to the final destination. So I could see 
if if this failed somewhere along the way, I could go, oh, look, the last communication was at Verizon, so maybe it is Verizon's problem. Again, this isn't the best example really here, but I did use it when I had my server in the data center because I could see as the traffic went out of my network, went up to my ISP, went all over the world, went into their their um, their co-location facility, and once it went into their co-location facility, they had a number of routers there before it hit my server, right? So sometimes you would see that it would get like two routers in and then fail. Well, then I call them up and I tell them it's their problem. Other times I could see that it got three routers in, which is I think how many routers my server was in, and then it failed at that point, which I knew meant that it went through all their routers, it failed at my server. So that's how you can use this trace route command. The final thing that is really, really useful in the real world is being able to tell ping the number of times you want to ping a, uh, a device. So I'm going to ping the computer test. So that is the computer test. And I can do hyphen n and then say how many times I want to ping. So during a normal ping process in Windows, it only pings four times. In Linux, it goes on forever, but in Windows, it only pings four times. Well, if I'm waiting for a server to come online, or if I'm waiting for a server to go offline, using the ping command is a really easy way to know when that has happened. I can simply just keep pinging the device until I see it come online or go offline. So with this example, what I can do is I can do ping test hyphen n 200. So it's going to ping the computer test 200 times. And then all I have to do is I just have to hit enter. And now as you can see, it's pinging away. So test is the IP address of 192.168.1.5. And now I'm going over to the computer and I'm just being mean to it and shutting it off right now. And as we can see, right as I shut it off, it no longer applied. Request timed out, now request time, it's gonna keep timing out, keep timing out, keep timing out. So that is a very easy way to see if the computer has booted up yet or has gone down. So a lot of times, again, when I'm dealing with a lot of servers, I will run this ping command because I have to reboot a server. And when you start dealing with things like small business servers, they take a long time to reboot. Small business servers take like 10 to 15 minutes to reboot sometimes. And so you don't want to just sit there looking at the server. So what I'll do is I will run this ping command with like, an N, a number count of let's say a thousand, and you just sit there and have that running in the screen doing my other work until I see that it replies, and then once it starts replying, I know and I can work on the server. Or if I'm trying to shut a server down and you have to do it correctly, you don't just pull the plug like I did on that one, uh, and you have to wait for it to go through all the steps to shut down, it can take a long time, again, you can be pinging it until you see it shut down. So those are the tips and tricks of the ping command. I know a lot of you old timers are probably like, oh my golly, Eli just spent 23 minutes on ping. But for you new guys, understanding how ping works, why ping works, and why you will use it is an invaluable tool. Ping is one of those tools I use every time I go to a client. It's just, it is so good, it is so useful, that if you don't know how to use it properly, you're just, you're just really hamstringing yourself for, for no reason. So yeah. So this was episode 317, Ping and Trace Route for Network Troubleshooting. I enjoyed uh, taping this episode and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.